Hello everyone and welcome to episode 25 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be having a look at how to create modules in BICEP. Modules allow you to create units of reusable code. So you can define what you uh, what you want a resource to look like in your module, you know, configure it all and, and so on, and then you can package that up and you can distribute that and you can reuse it. So you can store your modules maybe in a Git repository or maybe just in a shared folder or even just a folder on your machine. Um, but you can create those once and then whenever you create new templates you can reuse that module um, to deploy that particular resource. So these can be really useful things to create. They can allow you to create a set of modules that comply with your corporate standards maybe. Maybe you've got some particular requirements around network security groups or the way storage accounts are configured or the way VMs are configured that you want everyone to use. Rather than trying to figure out how to do that every time you create a template, you can create a module that does it exactly the way you want and then you can import that and, uh, and reuse it. Similarly, maybe you've got different teams working on different types of components. You've got a network team and an application team and so on. Uh, they can create modules that they uh, that define things the way they want them to be set up uh, and then you can uh, you can pass those to your users who are going to create the templates to actually deploy the resources and they can import a module finally you know, they can just be useful to stop you having to rewrite code if you deploy a lot of a certain resource and you always deploy it a certain way um, you can create a module to to do that every time so you don't have to keep writing the same code even if you never give it to anyone else it's just a personal module uh, it can still be really useful to stop you having to repeat yourself so let's have a look at how you can create modules and how you can use modules within the BICEP language. Okay, we're going to look at two steps for how to use modules. Firstly, we actually need to create the module. And then secondly, we need to consume the module in our code. So first, we're going to have a look at creating it. And this is really straightforward because there's nothing really different here um, from writing a normal BICEP template. So on the screen here, what we've got is a module for creating a storage account. It's fairly simple, but what we want to do is deploy a storage account and we want to make sure that, that storage account is configured in line with our security standards. We are enforcing that public blob access is turned off, that we have to have a minimum TLS version of 1.2 and that we support only HTTPS traffic. So we're setting those in our module so that everyone who then consumes that module is going to have those security defaults in place. So we've created our storage account using the storage account resource. This looks exactly the same as we've done it in previous videos where we're actually just, you know, we're just creating the resource. Um, there's nothing special about that apart from the fact that we've set the values to be whatever we want them to be. And you can see things like um, the access tier and the tier option we've actually set to variables further up um, just so that we can, you know, if we want decided one to change them later, we can just change the variable rather than doing it in the, in the resource. Nothing terribly exciting there. Um, and then the other thing is that when you're creating your module, you're effectively creating a contract with the user who is going to consume those. And that contract is in the terms of the parameters you're passing in and the outputs you press pass out. So you can see at the top here, we accept two parameters in our module, the storage account name and the location. And we give a default value for the location so that actually you don't have to supply that if you don't want to. So this defines what inputs our module expects when somebody uses it and then at the bottom here we've got our outputs and outputs are important here because they give us the the values that our module is then going to pass out to the consumer who is likely then going to want to use those in the rest of their resource um, so for an example here we are passing the storage account name because that's something that's actually going to be really useful um, for the end user but actually, and I've realized I've missed this now here, so we create it while we were talking, is more useful is the ID of the storage account. because that's quite often what you're going to need to use. So let's add an output here. There we go. And so we're now passing out the ID as well. So the consumer can take those and you have to you need to think very carefully about your contract for your module in terms of inputs and outputs, because if you change them later, you can change them, but it's obviously the person who's consuming them is going to have to take those into, into account, particularly for your parameters on your inputs. If you add more mandatory inputs later and release a new version of your module, um, then it's going to break for those people who are using it without the, the other new mandatory parameters. So think about that carefully in terms of what you want your module to have as inputs and outputs. But other than that, that's all there, there really is. It's a, it's a pretty normal piece of bicep. 
So we'll we'll save that and we'll store that somewhere to be able to be consumed. Now in, in this example, I'm storing it alongside my actual project file, so where I'm actually gonna call it from. You don't have to do that. Modules can be consumed from other places, but and you'll see in a minute when we look at the, uh, the actual main module, or the main component, sorry, is that they have to be referenced using a relative path. And so you can't put them on a different drive. They need to be on the same volume effectively as the resource um, who's going to consume them. So, you know, if you wanted to store these in something like Git or in a shared folder, you'd need to make sure that you check out that Git repo onto the drive um, or you, you know, shared folders actually on the same drive, which is a bit of a pain. Um, it would be nice if we could reference them from other places, you know, maybe a network volume or, or so on. Um, but at the minute, it does have to be that relative path. So let's go have a look at how we consume those modules. Okay, so here we've got our top level template where we actually want to consume the module. Uh, and consuming a module is really easy. All you need to do is use the module keyword. So you see here on line three, we're using that keyword to declare we're gonna use a module. Then we've got a name for it. So that's just a name that we can refer to it by like everything else we've created previously in Bicep. And then we've got the path to the module file. Um, and as I mentioned, this is where you need to make it a relative path. This example, the module file itself is in the same folder as the actual um, template. So you see they're, they're together. So I can just reference that directly. Um, but you could, if you wanted to, um, you know, look to somewhere else on the drive. So let's say I'm going to do in my temp folder on my same drive, um, and I could reference it that way. That would work fine as well. Note you need to use forward slashes here for your uh, your folder structure rather than backslashes uh, to make it more generic for to be Linux compatible. Um, so we'll just leave it using that there. And then we're going to pass in the parameters in this parameters section. So if you remember from our module itself, we've got a storage account name parameter, and we've got a location parameter. We're not setting the location one because it's got a default value, so I'm just going to use that. But we are setting the storage account name, which is set to this prefix parameter that we're actually passing into our, um, our template when we run it, and then the word STG. And that's the only variable we need to pass into our module. So you can see I've got a very small module declaration here um, that actually, when you look at the module itself, is doing quite a few things. It's setting all those default values, it's creating a container within that uh, storage account and so on. Um, so you can hide a lot of complexity behind a module um, and for the user, it can be very simple um, just to consume that. Now we passed in some parameters here, but as I mentioned, you also get outputs from your module that you can use elsewhere. Um, and all you need to do to reference those is like we've done here on line 10, storage account name that you refer it to, to it, although sorry, the module name that you refer to it as dot outputs and then dot whatever the output you're interested in. So you can get any of the outputs in there. And outputs might be simple strings like we did here. They might be full objects um, or other complex structures. It depends really how complicated you want to make your module. Um, I'm just sticking this in an output, but obviously I could use that to pass into other resources I'm creating or do whatever I wanted to. So we'll just quickly save those. Um, now that we've got our module, uh, we can deploy that. And let's, so let's have a look at how that actually translates into the arm behind the scenes and what modules are actually doing to make them work. So over at our CLI, we're just going to compile that bicep file using the bicep build command we've all used before. Okay, and that's compiled that file for us. Um, there is a warning over there, but we can deal with that later. Um, so let's go back and have a look at the JSON that's generated. Okay, so here's our bicep file. And where the interesting bit is in, we have a look in the resources section. And what we've got, you'll see here, is a, is a resource of type resources slash deployment. So what this is, is a nested template. So modules behind the scenes are just nested templates. So if you ever tried to do sort of modular work within ARM, it, you did that using nested templates. You had a you had a template that you wrote one, you know, separately, and then you imported that into your actual script using the resources deployment section. So it's not actually doing anything really very new here. It's just using the nested template com concept um, to allow you to have your top level template calling into other templates, in your case, modules. 
it's using the inline nested template. So if you remember back from videos where we talked about nested templates, there are two options. There is the inline one where your actual nested template is in the same file, just within a, a nested section. Or there is the external one where you've got a, a template, a completely separate file that you import into your template. With bicep, when we're using modules, it's doing that in line in here. So you can see if we scroll down a bit into our um, resources section inside that template, it's got this storage account that we created with all those details. You can see we've got the access tier and the public access and so on nested within the template. And so this is quite clever because what it's basically doing is it's allows, allowing you to use the functionality of nested templates, but without you having to actually deal with all that and without you having to work out one of the sort of most painful parts of nested templates, which was if you use external templates, where do you put those templates so they can be consumed at runtime by the actual ARM fabric because they needed to be somewhere accessible to that. So they had to be in a storage account or something like that. You could get around that in ARM templates by putting it in line like this, but then you lose all of the modularity because you still have to keep everything within one big template. So with Bicep, you're still allowed to, to write your modules separately. They're completely separate files. They can be you know, managed separately. You can pull them into your project. But when it comes to deployment time, it's bundling it all together into one ARM template. So you don't have to worry about making your files accessible, um, your module files in particular accessible, outside of your local machine. Now, the downside, I guess, is that your actual ARM templates that you generate are going to get really complicated and really long, uh, particularly these a lot of complex modules because everything is going to be shoved into one file. But that's kind of the benefit of Bicep is you don't actually have to care about these ARM templates. They're generated for you. So as long as Bicep's doing its job and it's generated the files correctly and you can deploy them, then it doesn't really matter how complicated they are. And with some of the newer tools where you can actually do a straight sort of deploy or, or run of the bicep template and all of this is hidden from you, um, then it really doesn't matter. So it gives you sort of the benefits of doing that without the uh, the downsides of having to deal with, what you know, where do you store these files and make them accessible? So that's uh, that's quite nice. And you can see, you know, we've got the outputs being set up and everything else like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's just a nested template. Now, one last point, if you remember from the last video where we talked about some more advanced techniques, was the um, scope piece. So you can see now, because modules are just using nested templates, and nested templates were the solution in ARM to allow you to deploy to other resource groups and subscriptions, that's why you get the scope functionality with modules. So if I come in here, I have a scope keyword. I don't need that problem. I'm too used to. Okay. And in my scope section, I can add in the name of another resource group or a, a subscription and resource group where I want to deploy that particular contents of that module to. Um, so that's another benefit of modules. Is it gives you that ability to you know deploy to a different resource group, so subscription to the rest of your template. So that's how you create modules using Bicep. Hopefully that's helped and you'll be able to take advantage of that really useful feature to create more reusable code, share them with your colleagues um, and build your own library of modules. Now, with that topic, I've come to the end of my list of things I wanted to cover in the ARM Template Masterclass series. Now, if you've got anything you think I've missed, anything you'd like me to cover or anything you'd like me to go into more detail with, um, I'm more than happy to have a look at doing some extra videos for those. So please get in touch either in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Sam Kogan, uh, and I'll be happy to talk about that. But if not, then we've come to the end of the series. Hopefully that's been really useful for you and you've been able to go, go from wherever you were when you started to being an ARM template master. I hope I've covered all the topics you were interested in um, and you've been able to work through all the examples and uh, and get yourself going with ARM templates and that it's been a helpful course for you. So if you've got any comments or anything you'd like me to do additionally to this, please do let me know. But if not, I hope you've uh, enjoyed the course. Thank you very much for watching and I'll, I'll catch you next time.